Welcome back to more Doki Doki Literature Club Plus. One more time, I do want to remind you, if this is your first time seeing this video series, be sure to go watch my original play through the first game first and watch the other episodes of Doki Doki Literature Club Plus before watching this one. So go do that right now. Link in the description down below or a thing up in the corner and go now. All right, they're gone. Now the cool people can get to the real shit. And back to desktop. So I was actually, before we get to the next side story, I was messing around with the files a little bit and there are some changes in the context of the whole thing as a game. For example, if you go to internal, the backup, there's a whole thing about meeting notes in here. Just talking about it, like new tasks, test cases for new genetic model, server time optimization idea, automatic data collection. Row is on VM2, everyone else on VM1 for data collection. So like a updated version or something um there's even a text in here about yeah insecure directory this is a scratch deck scratch disk do not use it to store sensitive or permanent things if you need to access files from the encrypted file share copy them to your disposable drive and plug it directly into the thin client do not copy them here Rhea is working on setting up a proxy mail server blah 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 signed paula so like these are new people in this weird metaverse thing? Hard to say. But it's there. But for now, we can ignore that and just continue on our stories. And it looks like Natsuki is a finally going to join the fray. <clears throat> it's been several weeks since the club has officially started. Through their initial setbacks, the three club members so far, Monica, Sayori, and Yuri, have increased their collective bond within the club. Oh. That's good. Sayori has partaken in some of Yuri's high fantasy literature, and all three of them, led by Sayori, have taken an interest in poetry. On a day like any other, the three find themselves suddenly interrupted by the club room door opening. And in walks a girl none of them have seen before. Hi! Sayori tugs excitedly at Monica's sleeve. Yuri shifts in her seat and buries her eyes in her book. Are you here for the literature club? Yeah. Yeah, hey, that's great. Thanks for stopping by. It's kind of a small club still, so it's really exciting to see new faces. Yeah! Come and sit down somewhere. You can sit next to my desk. Sayori prances over to her desk and presses her palms to it. Oh, and Yuri can make you some tea. Huh? Yuri looks up at Sayori in protest of having drawn attention to her. Natsuki silently glances between everyone, then sits down next to Sayori. Monica follows by sitting nearby. The sudden gathering prompts Yuri to stand up, deciding that standing in the corner and making tea doesn't sound so bad after all. Okay, then how about we all introduce ourselves? Okay. Well, I'm Monica. I'm the one who started the club. I was originally in the debate club, but I really wanted to do something I felt more passionate about, if that makes sense. So I started the literature club as a way for people to express themselves through writing or reading or whatever other kind of literature. I know, I figured it was your club. You have that vibe. Uh, I have what vibe? Oh, you know, like, never mind. I'm not going to judge people I just met like that. Very adult-like of you. I always judge people so hard. Oh, no, you don't, Sayori. Yes, she does. <laughs> Yuri's deadpan voice carries across the room. Natsuki giggles. I'm Sayori. I just like learning about everyone and making friends. Oh, and I also like poetry. Oh, yeah? Very adult-like of you. <laughs> I'm an adult. The sound of Yuri's electric kettle steaming up fills the room. Oh, that's Yuri. Siori lowers her voice. She's kind of shy, but she's really nice and super smart. She likes big fantasy books and tea, and I love her. Well, I guess it leaves me then. I'm Natsuki. I like listening to music and hanging out downtown and stuff. My favorite ice cream flavor is strawberry. Ooh, let's get ice cream. My favorite flavor is probably cookie dough or maybe chocolate. It's cookie dough. And Monica's is probably... Probably vanilla. What the heck? Ah, oh. my favorite's vanilla. Oh, I'm the Monica of the group. 
I take way too many online quizzes. The ice cream ones are always accurate. What's Yuri's favorite? Natsuki shrugs. Probably green tea. <laughs> I'm just joking. I have no idea for Yuri. Still, yeah, it's pretty chill here. Do you just like hang out or do you actually do club stuff? Ah, oh, well, we do club stuff too. It just hasn't been very structured yet since we only have like three members. So we kind of just loosely spend our time doing stuff that we like. But I keep thinking about it's time we start with like some more structured club activities. It's been a while now since I started the club, so yeah. Well, with that being said, what kind of literature are you into, Natsuki? Anything you'd like the club to get into? Ah, uh, well, I guess I'm... Literature... Well, I like manga. Manga? Hey, why'd you say like that? <laughs> I want to read manga in the club. Wait, hold on a second. That sounds great. Like, after I've been doing all this, um... Yuri ter returns to the desks with a tray of teacups, which she sets down on an empty desk. After all of the deep and immersive reading I've been doing, I wouldn't mind doing something a little more simple. Manga isn't simple. If you think that, then you just don't understand the nuance. Uh, I didn't mean simple like that. Well, anyway, putting manga aside, is there any other kind of literature that you're interested in? Well, not really. In that case, have you considered the anime club? Are you serious? I'm not gonna join the anime club. That place is filled with weebs. It's full of weird guys. Weebs, come on. Is it that big of a deal? Manga is literature, right? Um, I mean, I guess if you consider the literal definition of literature, then technically, I get it. Look, I'll do whatever club activities you want. Can I just please join? I won't bother anyone. If I could just like keep my manga here and hang out after school, I'll do literally whatever you want me to do. That's fine, right? Yeah, I guess there's nothing wrong with that. Oh my god, thank you! You're the best! I have most of it crammed in my locker, so I'm gonna start setting it, okay? Natsuki stands up. Need some help? Nah, I got it. I don't want to see you in my- I don't want you to see my locker. <laughs> if you say so, but there's no way it's worse than mine. I hope we never find out then. Natsuki exits the club room, leaving everyone in silence, save for the sound of Yuri sipping her tea. Ugh, I'm such a pushover. Hey, it's not that bad. Natsuki seems like a lot of fun. Maybe, but I mean, she has like no actual interest in literature, you know? And that's normally fine, but she said she would participate in club activities like it's some kind of obligation. Her tea is going to get cold. Yeah, wait, that's not related. Well, I think everyone deserves a chance. Especially if we can bring her happiness. Besides, maybe she'll be take a liking to literature. Are you sure you just don't want to read her manga, Sayori? Hey, who do you think I am? Sorry, I didn't mean that. I just feel really uneasy about this. Do you have any opinion, Yuri? Not particularly. She said she wasn't going to bother anyone. That includes me, so... Does that mean I bother you? No, you're a pleasure to be around. <laughs> I was just fishing for a compliment. I know. But still, I really think we should give her a chance. Yeah, all right. But I really am going to start enforcing club activities. I'm willing to cooperate. Suddenly, the three of them hear a thump against the door. What was that? Sayori stands up and walks over to the door, then opens it. <laughs> Thank you. Carrying three boxes of what is presumably manga, Natsuki grunts and wobbles inside before slowly bending over and dropping the stack onto the floor as gently as she can. That's quite the collection. Siori giggles in excitement. While catching her breath, Natsuki replies, There's still one more box. I can put them away myself. I know how to organize them. Monica anxiously glances between Sayori and Yuri. Is this really okay for the club? Maybe it's what she needs to really kick the club into gear before everyone gets too complacent. It seems like things are finally going to get start getting more serious. Oh, about the club or about the side story? I don't like the way the game said that. <laughs> mm. At the next club meeting, Monica is the first to arrive. But ever since Natsuki joined, she feels a lot less relaxed. Why am I so nervous? Monica paces, trying to figure out her feelings. Natsuki said she wasn't going to bother anyone, so why does it feel like the atmosphere has changed so much? While Monica thinks, the club door opens, revealing Natsuki carrying a box. 
Monica forces a smile as Natsuki makes her way to the closet. Natsuki forces one in return. Need help? No, I got it! Monica awkwardly tries to start some kind of conversation, but fails. Curious, she peeks into the closet where Natsuki is dashing all of her manga. Once dull with school supplies, the shelves are now vibrant with bright, bright colors and cute looking artwork. You know, the top shelf is pretty empty. Maybe we could keep it up there? I can't reach up there. That would be so inconvenient. Yeah, but... Monica sighs. The teachers are going to ask what all this manga is doing in here, and I have to teach, tell them it's for the literature club. So? Monica backs off and slumps into a desk. With this kind of tension, it feels like the relaxed atmosphere accumulated over the past few weeks is being sucked right out of the room. Good afternoon. Sayori spins into the club room. Oh, I see someone's in a good mood. Yeah, because I have this. Sayori brandishes a cookie wrapped in plastic. I found some money and got a cookie. Ooh, that's so pretty. As Sayori trots over to the closet, the colorful shelves catch her eye. Which one do I start with? Well, you can start by giving me a bite of that cookie. No way! I saved up all my luck to find that money. <laughs> if you want entry into my kingdom, you need to pay the tax, peasant. Boo! Defeated, Sayori unwraps her cookie and breaks off a piece for Natsuki. Then, Yuri silently walks into the club room. Monica glances at her with pleading eyes. Yuri returns a quick nod of understanding. Well, everyone's here now. Despite the club only having one more person than before, it somehow feels twice as lively. Okay, so I think today we should go over some potential club activities and see which ones we want to do first. We have four members now, so it would be great if we found some stuff to do as a group. Does that sound good to everyone? I agree. Okay, so I have some ideas of my own, but I want to hear your ideas too. Well, I've been having a lot of fun learning about everyone else's interests. Maybe we can give each person a day to share their favorite kind of literature with everyone else. Well, maybe. Something tells me that... Monica glances at Yuri and Natsuki, who both appear very unwilling to even consider each other's interests. Maybe we can try to come up with something that everyone can enjoy equally. You know, like we all vote on a book to read or something like that. I think we should all collectively try to expand our interests, rather than just stick to the things we're familiar with. Why does it feel like I'm being targeted here? Natsuki, didn't you say that you would go along with whatever the club wanted to do? Well, yeah, but that doesn't make it okay for you to ignore everyone else's preferences. I like Sayori's suggestion. Yeah, me too! Yeah, but... Mm, Monica's voice trails off. Although she let Natsuki join the club, Monica finds it very incredibly difficult to relent to her demands. If Natsuki doesn't respect the club, why should Monica have to yield to Natsuki's opinion on everything? Natsuki, are you sure that you don't have any other literature interests you could share with the club? I swear I don't mind if you keep your manga in here, but I just... Natsuki cuts Monica off by suddenly standing up. Well, it's obvious I'm not wanted here, so I'm just going to leave but I really would have appreciated you being more upfront about it. Okay, I think you're kind of jumping to conclusions here, but you're free to do whatever you want. Ooh, tension. Natsuki shoots Monica a quick glare before walking straight out of the room. Oh no. Siori runs after her, leaving just Monica and Yuri. For the second time today, Monica slumps down into a desk. Why am I such a jerk? No, she's a jerk. She's just making me feel this way. Monica looks up at Yuri, seeking affirmation. Yuri looks away. She probably just went around looking for the smallest club she could find so that she doesn't have to participate. How does she expect me to give her respect when she has no respect for the club? Am I wrong, Yuri? I'm not... I'm not good at these things. Monica sighs. Me neither. I just have no idea what to do. I don't want to hurt anyone. But I feel that it's wrong, not wrong to enforce the club vision. You know, like, people should join because they want to express their passion for literature, or at least develop it. So maybe she's not a good fit for the club after all. Monica sits in silence, afraid to accept her tentative conclusion. Yuri looks tense, 
but she doesn't seem to want to add anything. You can... Sorry. You can go back to reading. I know this doesn't concern you. It does. It does? How? Well, I just can't comfortably read in an atmosphere where the peace has been disturbed. Oh. Well, great. I'm just ruining the whole club, then. That's not an accurate conclusion to make. I know. I'm sorry. I'm just kind of voicing my frustration. And I guess guilt. It's like my frustration wants to blame her, but my guilt wants to blame me. Ugh, why is it the hardest to be rational during the times you need it the most? I don't think you're being irrational. I think Natsuki is. She has no authority to walk in here and make demands of the club. Your club. Something as ridiculous as manga has no place here. And the fact that you're even storing it for her should make her completely indebted to you. Well, you're right, but I don't know. Isn't it kind of harsh to say things like it's ridiculous and it has no place here? Do you not feel the same way? You've been doing everything you can to avoid associating the club with it. So I assume that you felt the same way about it. That's not true. Well, recalling her confrontations with Natsuki, a realization starts to set in. Hmm. You may be right. I mean, if it was anything besides manga, would I really be acting like this? Maybe I've just been convincing myself that it has nothing to do with the manga. I am really upset that I would let myself do that. With a sigh, Monica walks over to the closet. She finds herself staring at the colorful shelves. It's just, this really isn't what I had in mind for a club about literature. There shouldn't be anything wrong with that. Monica starts defending her position once again. It's a complicated issue that Monica has failed to consider before now. Where is the line even drawn? At what's considered literature. Lost in thought, she reaches into the, one of the larger box sets and pulls out a volume, inspecting it for no particular reason. The cover features four girls striking cute and exaggerated poses, all dressed in short skirts. So, like, the cover of Doki Doki Literature Club? <laughs> yeah, I mean... Amused by the absurdity of the cover, Monica opens the book. Oh no, what if she likes it? That's the end of that. That was so short. So she started... Kind of looking at it? Is that it? Maybe Monica actually ends up thinking manga's kind of sick? Let's find out. This sucks. Why is Monica such a jerk? She wishes she'd be grateful that I even joined her stupid club. It's not like she can find any members. Monica's usually really nice. She cares so much about everyone in the club being happy. Yeah, right. Well, she usually does. Maybe when she's not busy being so judgmental. So what if I'm not into manga? Why can't just one person accept that instead of being so condescending about it? I accept it. I think it's cute. Oh, come on. That's condescending too. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it like that. I just want to support you. Not so key size. I know. Thanks. It just really sucks. Do you want me to talk to Monica? I don't know. It's not like it's going to change her opinion of me. Like, even if you were to convince her to back off, that would suddenly make me feel like I'm actually welcome in this club. That wouldn't, sorry. I should just find another club. Wait, you don't have to do that. We can figure this out, please. I mean, I'm the vice president, or at least I think I am. And I don't want you to leave. Everyone deserves to feel welcome and to be happy. So I want to make that happen for you. Um, I was wondering... What was the reason that you decided to join the literature club? Well... Natsuki hesitates. It's kind of dumb. Aw, don't say that! There's no such thing as a dumb reason when everyone is welcome. I wasn't welcome. You were to me! So... Just don't tell anyone, okay? Especially Monica. I promise. Natsuki sighs. I'm just tired of everyone judging me all the time. I can't enjoy any of the stuff I'm into without people making snotty comments about it. Not that I care about what anyone else thinks, but you know, the signs for the literature club said you can be yourself or whatever. So I decided that it was at least worth a shot. But that was a lie, apparently. Natsuki dejectedly, dejectedly kicks the toe of her shoe against the wall. Oh, and I like writing too. Really? How come you didn't say that to Monica? Because she was being so judgmental that I didn't. I, that I didn't just want to tell her something else she wanted to hear. 
She didn't deserve that kind of satisfaction. And if she knew I was into writing, then she would just be like everyone else and try to push me away from the manga in favor of the more mature thing. Hmm. The two of them remained silent for a while. Sayori understands that it's out of the question for Natsuki to return to the club room for today at least. But Natsuki has a reason for wanting to join the club, just like everyone else. It's part of the club vision for her to be welcome. You deserve to express yourself as much as everyone else. That's supposed to what the that's supposed to be what the club is for. So I'm going to do everything I can to fix this. I promise. It's lunchtime the next day. The cafeteria and hallways are bustling with students rushing to meet with their friends and make the most out of their limited break time. Where could she be? Among them is Monica, who always eats lunch in her classroom because she's lame like that, but she has some additional business today. Fearing Natsuki would avoid coming to the club, Monica decided to try to find her during lunch so that she could make amends. After searching for an extensive time, Monica finally spots her. Despite her short stature, Natsuki's bright hair helps her stand out from the crowd. Oh gosh. Suddenly feeling awkward, Monica is afraid to get closer. Natsuki is with some friends whom Monica doesn't recognize, and they're all energetically chatting together. It would be really tactless to just interrupt them. Oh, uh... Random friend person? That's like an all-new silhouette. I can't tell if I should be spooked out by that or if it's just completely normal. Oh yeah, did you end up joining that literature club or what? Huh? Of course I joined. Why wouldn't I? Ha! I told you she would join. Ha 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 ha! Come on! You know you, she only joined because you wouldn't stop giving her crap about the anime club. I told you. I never even wanted to join that stupid club. Oh, sure. Well, you have to give her some credit for at least making effort to finally grow past that trash. Oh, so she just has, like, awful friends? It's like that high school thing where there's, like, a group or circle of friends where there's always one that everyone just kind of, like, shits on and insults and berates because they're not really welcome there, but they still come back around because that's the closest thing they have to friends or even getting any kind of acknowledgement or attention from anyone else. And that's what's happening to Natsuki here. <laughs> True. Well, congrats on finally graduating middle school, Natsuki. We're proud of you. Shut up. Just let me do my thing. I'm just joking. You know we love you. Nah. Yeah, once the literature club makes you a famous writer, we'll be the first ones to buy your book. What, you're going to buy her smutty fanfiction? Yes. <laughs> well, obviously, I want to sign a copy. That was like 10 years ago. You don't think I've grown out of it by now? I told you I was joking. Besides, it's a good reminder of how far you've come since then. Not to mention you couldn't have done it without us. That gives us a pass to joke about it. Yeah, sure. They grew up so fast it brings a tear to my eye. Natsuki suddenly glances in Monica's direction, prompting Monica to quickly turn away and distance herself. What the heck? That was horrible. I should have said something to defend her. Why do I have to be so conflict avoidant? Not that I deserve to say anything. I'm hardly better than them after the way I treated her. Ugh, I'm so awful. I'm not doing anything right. After school ends, Monica distractedly makes her way to the club room. She finds Yuri already inside, eyes on a book as usual. Monica picks a desk and slumps into it, something she seems to be doing rather often lately. Yuri, I don't think I can be club president. I suck at handling anything that doesn't go, like, exactly my way. Yuri looks up from her book. It's like the literature club is a place where you get to express yourself, but it's just a way that I don't like. I'm so mad at myself. And I'm especially mad that I didn't have the self-reflection skills to realize what I was doing. So much for maturity. Sorry, I really shouldn't be complaining out loud like this. There's just like a lot on my mind. No. Hmm? I enjoy listening. Really? Mm-hmm. Why? Yuri shrugs. It's just makes me feel nice. Oh, well, okay. I guess I'll continue then. Yuri nods. Yeah, I just, well, Natsuki has kind of a blunt attitude, you know? It made me feel like she wasn't taking the club seriously. I couldn't even figure out why she wanted to join. I saw her friends talking to her in the hallway during lunch, and they were just so mean to her. Telling her to grow up and stuff like that. 
that the literature club would help her grow out of the manga. It just made me mad. Like, just her, let her enjoy it. It makes me happy. Why are you trying to take that away from her? One of the things I noticed that these side stories are doing with Monica is that they give her like her own little speech aneurysms. Aneurysms? Speech mannerisms. Speech mannerisms. Speech mannerisms. Uh, that she didn't have originally. Because she always had her like nervous laugh of ah ha ha. Um, but here when she's unsure of herself, trying to like make, make these friends, be the club president, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. She says like a lot. Like that's her crutch word. Trying to connect different thoughts or different sentences or move on to the next piece of information she wants to convey. She says like a lot. And a lot of people do. It's a very common way of speaking, but she didn't have this before. And I just find that fascinating. And when I had that thought, it was when I came to that realization that I was kind of doing the same thing, just in a roundabout way. I should have made her feel good about being passionate about something, but I just dismissed it. No, I was actually trying to avoid acknowledging it at all. I even did that with you, Yuri, when you first joined the club. You, you did? Yeah, I remember. Fantasy isn't really my thing, so I was kind of trying to dismiss it, but then Sayori jumped in and took over the conversation. I should have reflected on that, but I didn't, because I just let Sayori handle it instead. And now I'm repeating the same mistake, except I really hurt someone this time. Monica shakes her head. I'm so tired of being afraid of things I'm not comfortable with. It's just so stupid. Like, I could just picture how much joy it would bring Natsuki if I let her share her passion a little. I'm so angry that her friends were treating her like that. I'm gonna get them back for it. Get them back? Yeah, I'll get them back. By making sure that this is the literature club that Natsuki wants, not the one that they want. Unrelated, Yuri, do you have any knives I could borrow? Suddenly, Sayori bursts burst through the door, making Monica and Yuri jump. With a rare, stern face, she marches over to Monica's desk and sits down next to her. I'm having an intervention! I can do that because I'm vice president. Is this about Natsuki? Yes! Yeah, I know. I messed up. I'm super sorry. I was just talking to Yuri about it. Really? I was so dismissive of her passion that she felt threatened and probably just unwelcome. Literally the opposite of what the literature club is supposed to be. I really need to make it up to her. Oh! Yay, I did it! <laughs> Thanks for the intervention, Sayori. I'm glad we're on the same page. Friendship wins again! So how do you want to make it up to her? I have a plan. Sayori, do you know if Natsuki's coming to the club meeting today? She's... I don't think she is. I see. Monica was afraid of that. Not because of her plan, but because she's facing the consequences of the damage that she's inadvertently caused. But the only way to do the right thing is to face it head on. It's so easy to just duck away from conflict and wait for it to blow over, but that's not enough. To truly respect someone's feelings after you've hurt them is to face them and admit your wrongdoing. Not the wrongdoing of mismanaging the club, but the wrongdoing of disrespecting Natsuki's feelings. They're doing so many like wonderful like relationship information and conveyance or even like internal conflicts and all that. It's so weird to see. I love this. Okay, do you think you can get her to come to the meeting tomorrow? I can do that. Okay, awesome. Yuri, you don't have to worry about anything, but thank you for being my friend. You're a good listener. Mm -hmm. Fidgeting with her hair, Yuri turns away to hide a smile. Well, I guess for today, it's going to be a pretty quiet club meeting. I'm going to step out for a bit. Is that okay? Yeah, I'm just going to read with Yuri. Hey, is this one of Natsuki's books? How come it's out here? Siori picks up a manga that was resting on an adjacent desk. Oh, that, um, Natsuki probably just left it out by accident. But I thought she hasn't been coming to the club. Actually, Monica's been... Okay, Yuri! I'm sure it was just someone else who was using the classroom then, okay? Monica smiles at the mouth. Then, with a wave, she exits the club room. She is so into manga. She likes the one where the boys kiss. I really shouldn't have left that out. If Sayori catches on, she'll definitely tell Natsuki, and that would get really awkward. Now, I wonder if there's a keyboard I could borrow from the music room. Oh, she can do some piano playing? The time for the next club meeting has already arrived. Monica and Yuri are the first to arrive. I'm so worried. Do you think Sayori is going to be able to bring Natsuki? Yes. How do you know? Well, she's Sayori. 
Mm, you know, you're right. Time slowly passes. Monica sits, then stands up to pace around, then sits again. Yuri's eyes don't move from her book. Then the door finally opens. Siori marches inside. Behind her, Natsuki shuffles inside, nervously looking around the room. We're here! Welcome back. Monica, the club president, stands up and greets them with a smile. Siori picks a desk and takes a seat. Natsuki sits closely next to her. Looking back and forth between the club members, Monica is struck with a nostalgic feeling. Wait, nostalgic? She would stand at the front of the club room just like this, struggling to picture just who may eventually be sitting before her. But imagination was never enough to predict just how unique and diverse each member would be. With each with their own struggles, her own reasonings for seeking the vision that Monica had, admittedly, so vaguely advertised. Seeking trust, understanding, respect. What new lessons will the future hold for the literature club? Realizing she's getting ahead of herself, Monica takes a deep breath and returns to the present. Okay, everyone, the literature club is starting. We have an activity planned for today. Monica turns around to face the chalkboard. On it, she writes manga in big letters. Today, we're going to learn from an expert about a unique form of literature, manga. Oh, come on. Isn't this kind of forced? I know you don't actually want to do this, so just... Monica shakes her head. Natsuki, this is the hardest part. After making it this far, it would be so easy to just smile and move on. But that's not enough, not this time. I'm sorry. It was wrong of me not to take you seriously when you were kind enough to show interest in my club. I thought about it and realized how biased I was against manga. It caused me to disrespect you, and I'm sorry. But I think you deserve to be able to share your passion with us. So, can I make it up to you? Well, thanks, but... I know you're only doing this because Sayori told you to. Wait, that's not true. Monica planned this all by herself. I even get a chance to talk to her. I was witness to that as well. This is the Literature Club. The Literature Club is a club where everyone gets a place to be themselves. We all have our own interests, our differences. It's my vision to let us freely express that. And it's my goal to respect everyone for them. So I just want to learn about the things that make you happy. I think that you deserve to share the joy as much as everyone else does. Is that okay? Natsuki looks away and hesitates. But... It's really dumb. The stuff I'm into. Monica smiles. Oh, she's only saying that because her friends make fun of her for it. She kneels in front of Natsuki's desk, looking her straight in the eye. If you like it, then it's not dumb. Oh, except for me. Siriori, you're not dumb either. Ha! <laughs> what the heck? You guys are so weird. Fine, I'll show you some of my manga. Only because you admitted that it's literature after all. Natsuki stands up. Oh yeah, I didn't say this before, but I'm actually into writing too. I'm kind of a pro, but I don't want you to like, I didn't want you to like me for just that. Wow, really? I really did have you all wrong, Natsuki. Yeah, whatever. Today's not about that anyway, right? It's about manga, so I hope you're ready. A week has passed since Natsuki returned to the literature club. Since then, the club activities have been in full swing. Each club member had received a day in the spotlight to share all of their favorite kinds of literature with each other. As another meeting draws to a close, Monica approaches Natsuki on the way out. Natsuki, are you in a hurry home or anything? Me? Not particularly. Why? Oh, there was just something I wanted to show you, if you had a few minutes. Sure, what is it? It's not in here. Can you follow me to the music room? The music room? Why? Well, you see. Oh, is she gonna share her piano playing passion? Oh, new background! You know, I was thinking back when the club was just me and Sayori, we would talk about how we envisioned the club to turn out. We cared a lot about it being a place where people could express themselves. We'll look at that sheet music in the side for a second there. So what? C E C E. Da 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 da. Trying to see if that's like. Happens to be the sheet music of the song. I don't think so. I'm not awesome at sight reading anymore. It's been some time. Someone look at that music. 
What's the song that comes out of that? And she said something strange to me. She said I was trying to make the club that I needed myself more than anyone. But I think it wasn't until you joined that I finally understood that. Because you really taught me a lot about myself. Like things that I was probably always too stubborn to admit. Oh, come on. You can't mean that. I didn't even do anything. I'm just like brought a bunch of manga and then I got fussy when I didn't have my way. It was really stupid of me to make such a big deal out of it. No, I honestly needed it. If you didn't express that you were hurt, I would never have realized that I did something wrong. Besides, your feelings are valid. They deserve to be heard and respected. It's just really hard to feel that way sometimes. You know, like, I really shouldn't care about what other people think in the first place. But when you're just criticized by everyone around you for being a certain way, it would get really hard to just brush it off. I feel that. You do, your, do your best to let most things try to like roll off the shoulders or off your back or anything, but I don't know. It's really easy to ignore a few raindrops on your back, but when it's a waterfall, it makes me to start to feel like I'm the problem. Like I'm not doing enough to please everyone else. Am I being too entitled if I just want people to like me without me having to hide a bunch of stuff about myself? I don't think I am. I just wish that Sometimes people would try to appreciate me for who I actually am. As Monica listens, she recalls vividly how Natsuki's friends were treating her, and how naturally they did so. How long has she been fighting against that, refusing to change for others? I can only wish I was as strong as you are, Natsuki. You're so honest with yourself. I'm like, always trying to come off as perfect for other people. Anytime there's a hint of contention, I just crumble. But it's thanks to you that I really started thinking about this stuff. You really inspired me to start working on it. But I, well, like I said, I didn't even do anything. You were just being yourself. That's all you needed to do. Also, there's something else. Hmm? Monica takes a breath. Uh, the thing is, I might have read a little bit of your manga. What? You? What the heck? Why didn't you tell me? I'm sorry, I think I just, like, kind of felt embarrassed to admit it after I gave you such a hard time about it. <laughs> I can't believe you, of all people, for reading manga behind my back. That's so funny. Yeah, well, I just flipped through one of them out of curiosity, but I ended up reading a whole bunch of it. I mean, one of the characters was in a literature club. What are the chances, right? You're reading Parfait Girls? Wow, you have good taste. Just, just one volume. And I kind of picked it out randomly. Well, you've got good intuition then. You have to tell me your favorite parts. <laughs> well, I think it was some kind of weird fate. Because the character isn't just in a literature club. She also plays piano. It's just weird. Because I've always wanted to learn piano. She was like the perfect person that I always wish I was. If I just did what I wanted. Instead of always second guessing myself. Monica walks over to the piano and sits down. Ah, cute! It's adorable. I always felt like I should only share the absolute best parts of myself. The parts that will impress people or make them like me more. But after you joined the club, I really realized how self-destructive that mentality is. We share things because we want to express ourselves. Sharing experiences allows us to share emotions. And I just felt like, like I wanted to show you this. Because if it wasn't for you, I never would have started playing. <laughs> hey, I think the credit for that one goes to Parfait Girls, not me. No. Well, maybe it's true that Parfait Girls put the thought into my head. But it was still you who inspired me to keep practicing every day. Every day? Because, you know, you just... Make me feel like if I want to do something, I should just do it. I mean, I still haven't been practicing for very long, and I'm really not any good at it yet, like at all. But I wrote a song for the club, and I worked really, really hard on it. It doesn't have any words or anything, but, well, yeah. Ah. Uh.
It seems like a fancier version of the song that she plays during the end credits of the original game. Hasn't been practicing very long. Sounds flawless. This is also starting to feel like a conclusion to like the first part of the side story. There's more beyond this though, but this is very end credits feel, which is weird. So maybe like the creation of the literature club arc is over. Aw, hey everybody. That's all. That was so good. It was? Yeah, are you kidding? You're like already a pro. <laughs> Not even close. Does the song have a name? You said it was about the club, so... Yeah, it's called My Song, Your Note. Because everyone brings something so unique to the club. It's completely different from how we first imagined it, I think. But I was like such a selfish perfectionist. It shouldn't be about me, it should be about everyone. And it's all of you who helped shape the club into what it is. I would never change that. Well, I think it's really thoughtful. And kind of flattering. I kind of feel like I don't deserve this much validation. I wasn't exactly very patient either when I first joined the club. It makes me feel like I should probably apologize too. I think I was just really fed up with a lot of things and got frustrated after not getting my way in the club. So yeah, I really didn't mean to take it out on you. I was just being really immature. <laughs> if you get my stubborn butt to apologize, I guess you're doing something right. It's fine, I'm past it too. I think we're already even. But it's really sweet that you were thinking about it. It takes a lot of maturity to reflect on that kind of thing. Well. Well, I wonder who I got it from. Hmm? Oh, never mind. Well, anyway, we're even as long as you... We're even as long as you let me keep my manga in the club room. You did admit that it's some form of literature. You can, can't... You totally can't take that back now. You got me. The closet's all yours. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Tell you what, I'll bring in a little something for the club tomorrow. I want to do something nice in return. What kind of little something? Oh, you'll see. But I don't think you'll be disappointed. It's Yowie. The next club meeting ends up being a particularly tasty one. Oh, cupcakes, right? <laughs> that makes more sense. Oh, that's it. Any of the cupcakes. Oh, that's nice. I actually really, I think my favorite thing about these so far is that this is giving a lot more, a lot more screen time for Monica because she barely got to do a whole lot or really like talk to the girls or show herself as a person in the original game. And it just wasn't really there. Whereas this was like, it's, it's getting to show a lot more of her, which I really appreciate it. And man, like, after finishing Doki Doki Literature Club the first time, like the more and more I thought back on it, the more and more I just found myself feeling sorry for Monica. Like not that she was an awful, evil, terrible person. It's like she said, like she always visions things going a certain way. It has to be perfect. And when it doesn't go that way, it like upsets her. I also feel like she was just so desperate for some kind of connection with someone else, which in this case is with me or with the player that she was willing to do anything with that because she just wanted some kind of connection or some kind of relationship or some kind of friendship or acknowledgement or whatever it was. And again, not saying all that to somehow excuse or validate everything she did, but I, I understand why, which made me feel sorry for her. But anyway, these have all been great. I can't wait for the next one. So I'll do that really soon. As always, thank you guys so very much for watching. See you next time.